Hey everybody, uh, my name is JC Dean and today we're going to talk quite a bit about meditation and mindfulness. I've actually written quite a few articles on this. I've been asked many questions on how to get started, what it actually is, what are the benefits, how can it improve uh, your life, your training, and lots of other things that kind of happen uh, when you get into meditation and just specifically being more mindful. Before I go into any of this, um, I'm first going to say that none of this is religious in nature. None of this is super spiritual about Buddhism or any particular religion. This is primarily simple meditation. You can be an atheist, Christian, Jewish, Buddhist, agnostic, it doesn't matter. Um, I don't want this to be anything about religion or spirituality. So for the very first thing we should cover is what exactly is meditation? So if you look up the definition, it's basically to focus purely on one thing or to think deeply. So if you ever hear somebody say, I'm gonna go meditate on this math problem or I'm gonna meditate on uh, this phrase I read in this book, basically what they're saying is, I'm gonna think about nothing but this particular problem or this particular idea or this concept. So meditation in a sense is not this complex practice, it's, it's focusing purely on one thing. Um, and in fact, you, you meditate every day and it's something that we don't really think about much, but there's all kinds of periods during the day or throughout the week that you might find yourself, um, I say, zoning out and maybe you're at your job, maybe you're at school, maybe you're laying in bed at night, you're in conversation at the restaurant, whatever it is, and you find yourself zoning out and you you kind of lose focus of everything around you and it's it's almost like tunnel vision. And when I was in school, high school and college especially, I would, I would find myself sitting in the lectures and no matter how much I wanted to pay attention, I just, I, I have this problem, I, I'm, it just wasn't the right place for me to be. So I was constantly thinking about other things and I remember I would zone out frequently and I would either be thinking about something I wanted to work on later that day or an article I was writing or maybe a piece of music I was studying or whatever it was, it was outside of what we were covering that day. And I'm sure many of you have experienced that too. It's like you get super focused and, you, and it's like you're looking into you know, nowhere really, you're just focusing in, into this one direction or maybe you even have your eyes closed and uh, you snap out of it when somebody asks you something or uh, just gets your attention in some way. Um, I know I've experienced that a lot and I'm sure you have too. So congratulations. If you've ever been in that place, you have already meditated. When you think about it like that, it, it kind of settles the nerves a little bit of being like, oh, I'm about to do this complex, in-depth uh, meditation. You know, people say that I should be meditating. When in, when in reality, you've already done it. You've just maybe not have done it specifically or practiced it. So now that we've kind of covered what meditation is and kind of what to expect and the fact that you've already done it, I want to cover what meditation isn't. So this is really important for you to understand. Basically, it's not reserved for holy people. It's not this practice that you can only do if you are a monk that lives on a hill in Thailand by yourself. It's not about being perfect or holy or doing enough good things uh, up until a point of saying, well, I'm ready to meditate. It's a huge misconception that it's religious and that it's something that you have to prepare for. Or uh, another idea is that meditation is completely about emptying your mind. And that often keeps people from, from really getting started because they'll sit down and they'll read about it and they're like, well, I know I'm supposed to empty my mind, but this is damn near impossible. And I really struggled with this when I first got started. Uh, I actually got started back in July of 2012. And I remember sitting and at first I'm like, okay, I'm supposed to be able to empty my mind, but I, I can't. And it, it, it just seemed impossible. So um, luckily I found some really good resources and I read a lot about meditation and I realized that um, that's normal. So I want you to understand this is not about emptying your mind. Uh, this is not about being a perfect individual or being holy or being religious. So meditation is not reserved for someone who is uh, in a certain place in life. Anyone can do it. Another misconception is that your mind has to be free of thought. According to what we know about the brain, neuroscience, and 
what limited stuff we know about consciousness, that's pretty much impossible for the brain not to work and not to think. That's just what your brain does. We've evolved over millions of years to be these complex beings and we use our brains. Tons of stuff is going on in your brain constantly just to make sense of the world around you. Even when you sleep, uh, we're dreaming, there's constant uh, stuff that's going on in our heads. So to, to kind of shift your focus away from emptying your mind, meditation is more about just focusing on, uh, trying to focus on one thing, and I'll get more into that as I, as I go through this video and kind of explain how to get started. But usually we want to focus on one thing. One of the easiest things to do is focus on your breath, just counting your, your inhalation and your exhalation. Or you can focus on something else, like you can focus on how uh, your butt feels on the ground, how relaxed you are. You can focus on even your heartbeat if you can, if you can focus on that enough and feel it. But what you don't want to get wrapped up on, uh, the idea is that you're failing because you have all these thoughts coming into your head. Because when you're sitting there meditating, and say you're counting your breath, so every time you inhale that's one, and when you exhale that's two, three, four, and you keep going, tons of stuff is is gonna just come into your head. You're gonna think about you know, what you're making for dinner, when you gotta pick up the kids, uh, what you're gonna train today, uh, whether or not you, know, you uh, woke up early enough to get something done, and you didn't, and now you gotta do it later on. You're gonna think about all these things, and it's great, like that's perfectly fine, and you shouldn't get discouraged because this is how we evolved, and this is how we have grown to be. We are thinkers. The main thing that you should realize is that thoughts are not a bad thing. How you judge those thoughts and what you do with those thoughts will basically determine whether or not you continue your meditative practice. So to think about it like that, all you want to do is acknowledge the thoughts. Once you catch yourself thinking about something other than what you intended to think about, which let's say we're focusing on our breath and we're counting those breaths, say you notice that you're thinking about what you're making for dinner. Once you catch yourself, you say, okay, I'm gonna let go of that thought, I'm gonna start back over at one, and you start counting again. So I hope you understand by now that, that this is not about thinking about nothing, and uh, just because you have other thoughts that you don't wanna have, instead of focusing on what you wanna focus on, doesn't mean you're screwing up, it doesn't mean it's a bad thing, it's just part of the process. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is called mindfulness and people use this term a lot and it's pretty simple when you when you think about it. Um, people say, be more mindful of your behavior, be more mindful of your decisions and your choices. Um, that's easy to say, but when you really break down what being mindful is, you kind of have to dig down and, and get to the point of, of realizing, okay, being mindful means a couple things. It basically means focusing intently on whatever it is you want to think about it means remaining in the present because when you focus on something wholly and you're looking at it and I say wholly with a W not with an H like all of your focus is on that when you're thinking of of a certain thing and you're being mindful about it it should take up all of your attention to where you can't think of anything else so basically when I think of mindfulness all it is is just being aware of the present an idea that I tell a lot of my clients and, and I've written about this quite a bit and an exercise I like to use is you go into the gym and you pick a movement that uh, you've done many times you're super used to doing it and you're probably so good at it that you don't really need to think about it that much more um, think about it that much you know it's say you you used to when you were a beginner or when you first started using uh, that particular movement in your training I like to take something easy that's fun and, and easy to focus on is like bicep curls or maybe leg extension, something like that. Something that's easy to do um, but will you know, require you to focus on it uh, deliberately. So what I usually tell people to do is pick a weight that they can do for like you know, at least 15 reps and start doing the movement and focusing on how every rep feels. Focus on how heavy it feels, how your legs are beginning to fatigue and what's happening as the lactic acid is building up and your, and your muscles are starting to get tight and you're uh, maybe even starting to cramp for some people. And the goal is to focus 100% on that. When you can get to that place and you can be really mindful, you can start to take advantage of the things that you do all the time but you kind of take for granted. Another idea is, you know, even completely outside of the weight room, 
is to go walk in a park. Go do something that you do normally, but make a, make a deliberate focus and an intention to put your mind on one particular thing. Something I like to do is like, I like to go walk in a park or, or uh, sit, go sit in a park and just like, and like watch the things around me. And what I'll do is, is uh, like if I sit in one place, I'll try to pay attention to everything I hear and focus intently on, on all the stuff I hear. For instance, like I'll go sit in Centennial Park here in Nashville. And since it's right by the road, you hear all these cars, right? Depending on the time of the day, you might hear the birds chirping. Depending on where you're sitting, you might actually hear people's footsteps as they're running. Uh, you might hear them breathing. So what I like to do is sit and focus on one of those things. So I might be focusing on how the cars sound. I might focus on uh, the people's footsteps when they're running on the trail. Or if I'm sitting on the grass and I'm like under a tree, I might try to focus on the wind blowing through the tree and listening to that sound. So basically mindfulness is, is all about just being present and thinking about what's happening right now, focusing on that moment and, and trying to absorb every single thing. Mindfulness and meditation go hand in hand and, and once you start getting into meditation, when you, when you start focusing on that one thing, it's essentially mindfulness. Um, and we're gonna go into some of the benefits here, here in a second, but mindfulness is something that you can take away from meditation and you can use in pretty much all aspects of your life. So a couple more things that I wanna go over uh, briefly about meditation are some of the benefits. So one of the things I already touched on is mindfulness, which it, it teaches you how to focus a little bit better and it teaches you how to put your deliberate intention on one thing that you're doing. Uh, something that's really cool within the last, I don't know, maybe 10 years or so, uh, science is trying to make sense of this concept of meditation and mindfulness that uh, people in the East have been familiar with for thousands of years. And uh, some of the, you know, just surface benefits that you can get, um, meditation can help you relax. Uh, a lot of times people will use it as a uh, basically something to counter their stressful jobs or the stressful daily life, whether it's their commute or, or family situations, whatever it is, it's a huge stress reliever. There's actually been some studies showing positive results with people uh, who have lost loved ones or people who have uh, had, had experienced tragedies in their lives that they've had a hard time coping with. And they've actually done you know trials and studies where they put people through either guided meditations or visualization style meditations. Uh, the meditation I'm particularly talking about is the Vipassana style, which is simply uh, sitting still and uh, being mindful and focusing on one thing. And we'll go over that here in a, here in a second. But um, a couple other benefits are basically just peace of mind, uh, general better well-being as far as how you feel, how you look at the world. I know for me personally, I'm much calmer. I am able to assess situations in in a much better way. I'm just, I'm able to manage my daily life much better than I was uh, before. And I can only attribute that to just a daily practice of sitting still and being quiet. Another thing that I'm really interested in since I've been meditating with, within the last year, almost year and a half, is what can science tell us about the brain and meditation? Before I go really go in, into any of this and before you actually start to research and, and look up studies and stuff, there is data, there is stuff on PubMed, there's various articles written in some of the major uh, you know, online news sources, Fast Company, uh, there's probably been some stuff written on Forbes, various other really big places have written about meditation and the benefits. <clears throat> One of the problems though with especially Western science is we have this obsession with trying to reduce everything down to uh, you know, the smallest point. And we try to break everything down and, and make make something that's pretty complex very simple and when we do that we kind of miss a lot of stuff we miss a lot of uh, maybe the benefits or maybe some of the things that are just anecdotal that many people can attest to and benefit from but we run into some people who say well we don't have hard science for this so therefore it's it doesn't matter and we should probably not focus on it which I totally disagree with and I mean I can show you quite a few studies and quite a few trials and all these things that, that point to many of the benefits of meditation and why you should do it. But all I have to do is point to my personal experience and what I've, what I've uh, come to know 
through meditation and how it's impacted my life that I don't really need a study and I don't really need science to tell me that it's good for me. Am I telling you not to uh, look at the papers and telling you to completely disregard it? No, I'm still interested in it and I still read about it. I'm interested to see what happens in the next you know, five to 10 years as science and philosophy and specifically the brain and consciousness start to close in the gap. Because with science as we know it, we don't know much at all about consciousness. And we don't really have a great way of exploring consciousness. It seems to be something that's very individual and we can't really put it in a lab and, and you know dissect it and figure out what consciousness really is. So just to say like, Science has said a lot of good about meditation. It's not really something that is super well understood at this point. So if you go looking for a bunch of data to back up all the reasons you want to start meditating, you may not find it. And that's okay. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that it benefits you and you find a way to work it into your life if you want to. I mean, it's totally up to you anyway. So now that I've covered quite a bit about meditation, mindfulness, benefits and some of the ideas uh, about the science of it around meditation. Now I'm basically going to cover some of the questions that I've been getting asked ever since I started writing about meditation. One of the first ones is how do you get started? Well, it's actually really quite simple. I read a book and I actually have it right here. And I'll hold it up here so you can see it. It's actually called The Mindful Way to Study. It, it was originally called Dancing With Your Books. They, they revised it a little bit. It's written by Jake and Roddy Gibbs, and I'm actually really good friends with the author's son. And we, we started chatting through fitness stuff a couple years ago. And I actually read uh, the very first edition, and then I read this, the, this book as well. Now, while this book is basically about studying, because uh, Jake Gibbs is actually a professor, and he wrote this book to help his students get more out of their time that they spend on their academic work. And this is by far one of the best books I've ever read on an introduction to how to be mindful specifically and how to use that with your meditation. Um, but what I always tell people uh, to get started is to simply just start, just do it, you know, commit. You don't have to start with 30 minute meditations or hour meditations. I mean, I'll be completely honest, like I'm, I'm not up to hour meditations daily. I mean, I'm still working within the five to 30 minutes per day. So what I always tell people is start really, really small and find a quiet place that you're not gonna be disturbed. You can sit in a chair, you can sit on the floor, you can sit in a lotus position if you're flexible enough, I'm not. You can sit uh, Indian style with your legs crossed. You, you can lay on a bed, it's whatever is comfortable for you. The main thing is, is you, you don't wanna fall asleep. You want to be in a position where you're gonna stay alert. Preferably, you want to sit up so your spine is straight and you can breathe comfortably. What I did when I first started was I would set a timer on my iPhone for like three minutes and it would start ticking. It would just start ticking downward. I would close my eyes and I would just focus on my breath. And all I would do is every time I inhaled, I would count one in my mind. And then as I exhaled, I would count two. Inhale, count three. Exhale, count four. And then I would I would keep counting until I would my mind would wander and I would start thinking about other things. And once I started to think about something else and I caught myself in that moment, then I would stop and I would say, okay, my mind wondered, let's start over with counting my breath. And I would start focusing on my breath again. I would count one, two, three, four, and I would just, I would just keep counting. And what I would do is I would focus on how the air felt in my, in my belly and as my belly expanded and as it contracted, I would focus on how that felt and then Sure enough, my mind would wander again, and then I would have to catch myself, come back to the moment, start counting again, and then the timer would go off, and then I would be like, okay, I did my three minutes of meditation. And over time, I would start to up the intervals, you know, it'd be four minutes. In a week or so, I would do five minutes, six minutes, and I actually worked up to a point where I was doing 15 to 20 minutes, pretty effortlessly. And I actually had to see a teacher to kind of help me break through that. and. If you still struggle after a while sitting, it sometimes helps to sit with other people. So either find a group in your area of people who are meditating. Sometimes you can meet with them like once or twice a week whenever they're, whenever they're meeting. And it's basically just for accountability purposes. And it's also, it's pretty interesting to sit with other people who are serious about meditation. And first time I ever sat for a full 15 minutes was with, with, was with my teacher. 
And I remember explaining to her some of the problems I was having with getting comfortable or, you know, maybe I'm sitting in a certain way and my foot starts to hurt. It's a common idea to, to try to move and get comfortable. But what you want to do in, in my personal experience, experience and what I've done is I would sit there and I would focus on a particular feeling I was having. Maybe my foot was falling asleep or maybe my ankle was hurting. Instead of moving and getting comfortable, I would focus on that pain. And most of the times the, the pain would dissipate, it would go away. It was just a matter of me just sitting and waiting. Now, of course, if it's like really painful, you, you know, it's probably not a good idea just to sit there like that. But something to think about, you know, we, we experience so many things in our lives on a consistent basis that we don't really pay too much attention to. We just kind of like move or, or we like, uh, we, we kind of course correct. We don't really face it. Which leads me to another thing that I want to talk about when it comes to mindfulness and meditation in general. One of the best movies, in my opinion, is Fight Club. It's given me an amazing perspective on life. I love the philosophy, and um, there's a lot of really cool things in the movie. Uh, one thing in particular, one scene, if you've seen it, is when the narrator and Tyler Durden, they're in this like basement or something in this lab, and they're cooking the fat, and they're basically using it to make soap. The narrator and Tyler are sitting at the table, and Tyler grabs the narrator's arm and he kisses his hand and the narrator says what is this and Tyler poured chemicals on his hand and immediately his hand started burning and Tyler says this is a chemical burn and this happens in our daily lives all the time the narrator started squirming and started freaking out just like all of us would if, if we held our hand over a fire or if somebody was holding our hand over a fire and we couldn't move it we would freak but what happened was uh, he started to try to escape his pain, the narrator did. He tried to escape his pain and escape uh, what was going on. And what, what was happening in the movie, it kept uh, flashing back him going to a different place. He was basically just trying to put his mind in a place where he was disregarding the feeling, the pain that he was experiencing. And Tyler would slap him back into reality and he would say, don't shut this out. This is your pain. If this is your burning hand, focus on this. This is where your life is right now. Don't don't go to another place and ignore this. This is going to teach you a lesson. Now, obviously, I'm not telling you to like inflict pain on yourself, but in your meditations, you're going to find places where you're uncomfortable. You're going to get to a point to where you're like, I don't want to do this because I can't empty my mind, whatever that means. You're going to find that it's to your benefit to actually push through those barriers, those mental blocks. I, I remember when I used to when, I, when my meditations were getting longer and I was still practicing on my own before I started seeing a teacher, I would set my timer for 10 minutes. And I remember once I would get to like the seven or eight minute mark, my legs would start to hurt. My hips would start to hurt because I'm not used to sitting in, in like the half lotus position. And it, it would really start to bother me. My initial reaction is like, okay, screw this, I'm getting up and I'm gonna call it quits. But I would stop and I'm like, okay, you know, it's only a few more minutes, I can bear this and I can get through it. And I found that once I got through it and once I focused on, on maybe what was painful, the pain would often go away. And I would realize that um, I had more control over my thoughts and my feelings than you initially think. And that was a big lesson to me. So if you need a refresher, go watch Fight Club. It is an amazing movie and uh, might give you a better sense, a better idea of what mindfulness is, how to think a little more about what you're experiencing right this moment. It might just give you some ideas on uh, pushing through some of the struggles and the frustrations you might have when you start meditating. Another question that people have asked me uh, consistently is, can you do this incorrectly? The, the short answer is, is really no. You, you can't really do it incorrectly as long as your mind is in the right place and you're focusing. And what I mean by that is, you're setting aside the time to do it on a consistent basis and you're doing what I explained earlier in the video of focusing on your breaths, you know, maybe picking something that you want to visualize on a goal or, or something you want to accomplish or, or something you're thankful for. Um, as long as you're sitting and you are making a, a, a really good attempt to focus on one thing, you can't really get this wrong. The only way I would say that you truly get it wrong is when you start to uh, do meditation for any other purpose than for your own personal well-being. And what I mean by that is if you're doing it because you want to show someone that you have the discipline to stick to a goal for an entire year, 
by meditating for three minutes a day, that's really missing the point. And actually I saw someone made a status update, said I successfully meditated for 365 days. I meditated an entire year and she basically marched off in her calendar. And I, I couldn't help but think maybe she got a lot of benefit out of it, but here she felt like this need to broadcast it to the world, said that, oh, I've, I've been meditating every single day, which, which is really great, but it kind of goes back to the whole idea of uh, trying to be perfect, trying to, trying to measure everything and, and trying to do things right and getting frustrated and um, instead of just focusing on the moment and focusing on actually what you're doing. So I really don't think there's a wrong way to do it. Uh, I think the main thing that you should always focus on is doing it for your own well-being, doing it because you want to and not because you think that you have to because I'm making this video or because I said it can help you with your training, your daily life or relationships or whatever. You should always do it for you. The last question that I wanted to cover, somebody asked me recently was, how do you know if you're headed in the right direction? That's a great question. And I think the way that you will really know when you're headed in the right direction is when the practice starts to solidify and you start to realize that when you sit, it's easier to get into the focus that you want to, that state of mind that you want to get into. A couple other things I noticed whenever I was really starting to get the hang of meditation was I, I used to lose concept of time. And I remember one time I was, I, I got to the gym, I was going to train a client and I actually got there a little bit early. I went into the yoga room and I basically got a mat and I sat down and I started meditating. I set my timer for like 15 minutes because I didn't want to, I didn't want to go over the time and be late to my session, but I was sitting there and I remember uh, really getting into my breath and counting my breaths and uh, I eventually got completely lost in the moment, uh, completely lost and I became transfixed with um, how my breath was feeling against my belly and that was where my mind was the whole time. And it got so intense that the sun was coming in through the, through the glass and I almost started to hallucinate a little bit with uh, these visualizations that I was having because basically the sun was coming in and um, you know, obviously my eyes were closed, but I could still see the light uh, through my eyelids. I lost complete concept of time. Um, I basically set my alarm for 15 minutes, and it seemed that as soon as I got into a really good meditative state, uh, my timer was going off, and it and it felt like I hadn't been there for any time at all. Uh, so I was I was completely lost in the the moment. So I think one way that you'll know is when you start to get into the state a little bit easier, um, you'll start to realize that you can sit for longer. And I think another thing is you, you'll start to want to, you'll have a desire to want to sit longer. I know for me, I, I actually started to look forward to my daily meditations and sitting for 10 minutes was no longer a problem. And I would sometimes do that for multiple times a day. And then when I started working with a teacher, you know, I could sit for 15 minutes, I could sit for 20 minutes. And then it became, just a point to where it was it was a daily practice for me. So I think, you know, that's when you you know you're headed in the right direction. If you're if you're consistently struggling, I would start to just basically ask, you know, are you doing it during a time of the day that's just not good for you? Or are there like distractions that you're not really aware of? Um, maybe you need to try it in a different location. Um, and lastly, if it's just like if it's not like, working for you, I would I would suggest like if you're really interested, go find a teacher. And most major cities are gonna have places where, you know, maybe they're like a yoga studio or there's sometimes like Dharma, Dharma centers where you can go and you can meet with a teacher there that usually teach some form of meditation. Usually it's like a, it's a Buddhist style, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's religious in, in, in any nature. And most people are not trying to push their religion on you at all. Like if you wanna go meditate, they're like, cool, come sit down. We have a mat, you can meditate and, and it's, it's great. And I've actually been to those places where I've gone in, I said hi to the instructor and didn't say a word to anyone else and didn't talk, we just meditated. As soon as we were done, no one said a word and we just left. And so it's kind of neat to go in without any expectation of having to talk to someone or you know, none of that pressure. So it's really nice to walk in, sit, meditate, leave. So if you're struggling, that's something that I would consider. You know, there, it's not possible to cover everything in a video because I know there's gonna be a ton more questions so if you have any questions at all, pop them in the comments below. You can send me an email. My Facebook links, uh, Twitter links are in 
the section below the video as well. I look forward to hearing how meditation is going for you. Again, I'm JC Dean. Thanks for watching and see you next time.